Hi, this is Ron Sipsick, and this is the third segment in a three-part series on pure competition. In this particular segment, we're going to use the purely competitive model to derive the firm's supply curve, the short-run supply curve. And it's important to remember uh, that a firm will not stay open if price is below AVC. So to understand the analysis we're about to do, you have to understand the shutdown cage case, which we talked about in segment two. So again, the shutdown rule, let me just make a note of this. The shutdown rule is, and I'm going to do it in red here, the shutdown rule You'll shut down if AVC is greater than price at QM. And again, QM is where MC equals MR. All right, now, if you don't understand this particular rule, you should really go back and look at segment two, where I talk about the shutdown case, and that lays a foundation for what I'm talking about in this particular segment. Okay. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I have drawn uh, the purely competitive model for the firm. And the key thing to remember here or to note is that the ABC curve is the cost curve that's drawn here. Notice that in all of the other models we've drawn, we've always put the ATC curve in. But here we're putting the AVC curve in. Now we know that the ATC curve would be up here somewhere. Remember, the a ATC is above AVC, all right? So we're going to leave that out because it just kind of messes up the picture and complicates things unnecessarily. We're going to make sure that we're, we just have to note here that this is AVC, not ATC. Now, if the price is at P0, say way down here, this firm would shut down. Why? Because you can see that the price, the price line, the red line, is below the AVC curve. So if AVC is greater than price, the firm is not going to even operate. So this demand curve, this DMR curve, we'll call it DMR0, and this price P0, this is actually what we would call a shutdown price. I'll just use SD for that. This is a shutdown price. The firm would not even operate at that particular price. It would shut the operation down. Again, because AVC would be greater than price at Qmin. And of course, Qmin would be right here where MC equals MR. Now, what would happen if the price were raised or the price were higher and let's say it's at P1? Well, at this price, at P1, which associates with DMR, one, you'll notice that where MR equals MC, AVC equals P. All right, so at this particular point, I'm just going to wiggle over here. At this particular pr point, price equals AVC. So this would be basically um, the the cutoff point. In other words. If the price got up to the point where price equaled ABC, the firm might consider staying open. It would be indifferent. Okay, So we'll say that at P1, the firm will stay open because price is sufficient to cover the average variable costs. So where would the operation be? The operation would be at QM1. And again, I remind you, at QM1, price equals AVC. This is the minimum price that would allow the firm to stay open. Now, say the price rises even further. Say it rises from P1 up to P2. So here's P2. And so the price rises. Would the firm like this? Of course, because now the price, look at, notice at this point, price is greater than AVC. If price is greater than ABC, the firm will want to stay open. So this demand curve is, we'll call this DMR2. And notice that this demand curve, the firm would begin to contribute something towards the recovery of its fixed cost. It's not only covering its variable costs, it would be contributing something to the recovery of its fixed costs. And we'll call this QM2. Notice that when we move from point one, calling this point one, 
2.2, I'll call this point 0.2, notice that the price is rising and the quantity that the firm wants to produce is increasing. So you'll notice that the firm will only operate on the portion of the MC curve that is above what? That is above ABC. So this portion of the MC curve that is above ABC is essentially the only relevant portion of the MC curve. In other words, the firm never operates on the portion of the MC curve that is below ABC. So the tail of the MC curve is basically irrelevant. All right. So again, this is a big idea, and I'm, I'm going to lay, you know, really want to lay the foundation here. The only portion of the MC curve that the firm operates on is that portion of the MC curve above ABC. Now, let's go ahead and move down. I want to show you something. I want to connect this with something you've learned earlier. Back in back in an earlier lesson, you learned about the supply curve. Okay. Let me just sketch, get a two-dimensional space going here. And P, quantity supplied. And you learned way back at the beginning of our lessons in, in microeconomics, you learned that what does a supply curve show? A supply curve shows the relationship between the price of something and the quantity supplied. So here's P1. Here's QS1. Here's P2. P2, here's QS2. And you learned way back that an increase in price moves us along the supply curve, moves us along the supply curve. An increase in price causes movement along the supply curve and actually increases the quantity supplied. And we said the reason for this is the profit motive. So an increase in price leads to what? An increase in the quantity supplied. A decrease in price leads to a decrease in the quantity supplied. This supply curve, now I'm talking here about a firm, I'm not talking about the market. This supply curve is actually the MC curve above greater than ABC. Let's go ahead and scroll back up and you'll see that. Let me go ahead and scroll back up. Oops, sorry about that. Moving the size. Didn't mean to do that. Let's move it. Let's move it out. When that, excuse me, when that price line moves up, when P moves up, Q moves up. Why? Because you're moving along this upward sloping MC curve. Now it is not linear. It's nonlinear. It's increasing at an increasing rate. It's fairly steep here, which is typical under the conditions of law of diminishing returns. So this MC curve is increasing because of the law of diminishing returns, right? So notice what happens here. The higher price moves us up the MC curve and increases the quantity supplied. Now we don't call it quantity supplied here. We call it the profit maximizing quantity. But again, notice it's the profit motive. When the price goes up, more units are profitable. More, when more units are profitable, the firm is inclined to produce more units. Again, so the idea here is that the MC curve above AVC is the firm's supply curve. Now, we didn't talk about this in the earlier lesson on supply because we had not yet developed some of the cost material. But now that we've gone through cost behavior, and we've derived this thing called an MC curve, we can talk about the uh, origin of supply. The origin of supply is the marginal cost curve. Okay? Now again, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to go over things we've, you know, spent a lot of time going over things we've talked about before, but let me, let me just go ahead and show you something. If you take, if you take the supply curves, let me just go ahead and set something up here. I'm going to set this up. It's going to be a very small little model. I'm going to set up. Three models here. 
Here, I'm going to move this down a little bit. And um, just for the sake of argument, this is P, this is QS, this is P, this is QS, this is P, this is Q capital S. These are little s's, lowercase s's. Okay? And this is going to be a firm. Call this firm 1. This is a firm. Call this firm 2. This is the market. And let's say that the market is only, is only, ha only has two firms. Firm 1 plus 2. Okay? Now, of course, there, in, in the purely competitive case, there's millions of firms, and I don't want to spend any time trying to draw a million firms. Okay? I think you have better things to do than watch me draw a million firms. Okay? So we can get the idea with two firms, but you could extend this out to millions of firms. So here's a supply curve. Here's a supply curve. Okay? And so this is little s. Little s little s. And let's say at a price of, I'm going to go all the way across here, let's say at a price of um, 100, this firm is willing to produce 2,000. Let's say that at a price of 100, this firm, which produces the same thing, this is, these are point ones, point one. Say this firm is willing to produce 2,500, okay? Okay? Well, then at a price of 100, what would be the collective output of the two firms? This point over here would have to be what? What would it be? It'd be 4,500. This is called horizontal summing, where you sum across the price at the you sum across at a given price, and you get the quantity supplied. So, the 2,000 plus the 2,500 gives you the 4,500. We could do this again. Um, say the price is 150, and the firm this is 0.2, and the firm this firm would want to produce, let's say, 2,400. Let's say that at a price of 150, this firm, 0.2, would want to produce, let's say, uh, 3,200. Just making the numbers up. So what would they collectively produce at 150? Well, at 150, they would collectively produce out here somewhere. Get rid of that come down, and what would that be? 2,400 plus 3,200 would be what? 5,600. Okay, so um, I'm going to put it in here, 5,600, right? 2,400 plus 3,200 would be 5,600. And so here are our points. And um, See if I can draw that straight line. There's your market supply. Notice the capital S there, uppercase. So here's point one, here's point two. So the moral of the story is you take you take the supply curve of firm one, add it to the supply curve of firm two, horizontally sum it, you get the market supply curve. Which means this supply curve here, here's the big point I'm trying to make. This market supply curve. Sound effects in our videos. Okay, so that market supply curve is what? It's the sum of the MCs, of the individual firms. The market supply curve. is the sum of the MC curves of all firms in 
the market. Now again, we didn't give this information to you in the earlier lesson when we talked about the supply curve because we had not developed the concept of cost. But now that we've increased, uh, now that we've increased your understanding of cost, hopefully, now that you understand where a, where a marginal cost curve comes from, uh, you should now understand where the supply curve come from, comes from. It's, a, it's basically derived from a cost curve. And if you want to take this a little deeper, remember why are marginal cost curves upward sloping? Marginal cost curves are upward sloping. In fact, let me go ahead and write this out because this is important. Marginal cost curves are upward sloping because of what? The law of diminishing returns. Let me, let me, let me just write this out here. You recall, I hope you recall, that when marginal product is falling, this is called the law of diminishing returns. It assumes the plant size is fixed. When marginal product is dropping, law of diminishing returns, you learned that marginal cost is increasing. So why does, why does marginal cost increase? It's because of the law of diminishing returns. So therefore, why, why are supply curves upward sloping? Why are supply curves upward sloping? Again, it's because of the law of diminishing returns. All right, that concludes our lesson. We have derived the short-run supply curve for a purely competitive firm uh, from, from that firm's MC curve.